Well, are you ready for the word this morning? I am so excited to bring it this morning. Um, let's, uh, hey, I'm Pastor Nate. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to, honored to be able to speak the word um, this morning uh, to you. Let's, let's come to the Lord in prayer uh, before we get ready to, uh, to, to, to talk this morning. Father, we just say thank you today. Thank you for leading us here. Thank you that we have eyes that see and ears that hear. But Father, thank you that you uh, give us hearts that understand. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to be the teacher today. Teach us. Show us. Uh, open our eyes, the eyes of our heart. And we thank you for uh, giving us today even the, the, the will and the grace to do according to your pleasure. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want a couple of things before we, we actually jump into the word. Number one, I thought it was really cool, uh, just the reiteration of uh, our lives will bring increase to the kingdom of God. Uh, it just seemed like that was highlighted uh, again today, but I was thinking a lot of, along those lines and how the, the command to Adam, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, still, it's, still in, it's still in effect. It hasn't stopped. And um, part of uh, being fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, that was, he was talking about bring, bring righteous, uh, righteousness back into the earth. Bring a God, a God established the kingdom, that ex- expand the garden, expand the, that which is good. And um, I think it's super important for us, just even in the heels of camp, talking on that announcement, um, man, I'll tell you, it's, it's so important that we command our children after him. How many of you know that's true? Command our children after him. That does take money, but it takes more than money. It takes my words. It takes my choices. It takes my life. It takes me saying the priority in my life, and we've been talking about this all year, is God first. First. So that's huge. It's huge. So demonstration, but uh, 20, I, I, we did a little math there real quick. If, starting today, if you were kids, if there was no fundraisers and no, none of that, um, if you just put aside $20 a week, uh, your, your, child, your child's camp would be covered. If you, youth, if you were to put aside $25 a week, your camp would be covered. Pretty cool um, how that works. I mean, you may, Mom, can I earn some money? Or, hey, can I go do, do a lawn? 25 bucks a week, 20 bucks a week, and I'll tell you, it's covered. And on top of that, you can always sow into, other, you know, put that in there, say, I want to sow into a kid, I want to sow into that, that's great ground, get in on the early, you know, how many of you wish you could have got it on Amazon about 20 years ago, right? Uh, it, it, it's a good thing, it's a good thing. Uh, and then no, number two, I wanted to just speak for a moment on prayer. Um, you know, one of the things we've been talking about, or actually we haven't been talking about, we mentioned last week, uh, about how just returning service to service. And so that's just kind of been going off on the inside of me a little bit. You know, even when we come to service, that there, this is not just an event, but there's a verb here, right? This is not just a noun, like, oh, I'm going to service, like it's a thing. No, service has always been, meant a ver- always been a verb. In other words, there was something that we were to do, to offer to the Lord. Or even as, 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 a, as a shepherd or as a pastor, you would be doing something or offering something to the people. And so uh, just returning service to service. In other words, there's an act that you come here for, both the, the, the ministering of the word or maybe the laying hands on, uh, on the sick or, or whatever it might be, ag- agreement in prayer or, you know, it could be one of a hundred things, setting an atmosphere in worship to where, to where you, you know, in a sense, even like David would play uh, in, 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 uh, for Saul, and, and it would give clarity of mind. In other words, the tormenting spirit would leave because in that in place of the anointing. So um, in, in regards to that, one of the things that we uh, started last week, and we're going to keep it going, um, and it doesn't mean that you have to come, okay? But uh, from, from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, the, excuse me, oh, excuse me, six, that's right. That's right, we made that adjustment. 6, six to 8.30 uh, in the morning, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, we're going to have the doors open. The church will be open, the sanctuary. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll have somebody playing on keys, but we'll always have music on. As a matter of fact, uh, we've been recording some of the things that have been being played during the times of prayer to where they, that is what's played even when there's not live. Um, so that's really special to me. Um, but anyways, from, from, again, 6 to 8.30, if you want to come and, and pray, if you want this to be a part of a habit of devotions, or maybe one time a week, or maybe you just know that it's open, the church is open, maybe some of your friends just need to know the church is open, it's just a service, right? 
It's a service to you. It's a service for, uh, for us. And, and it's not something to say, well, I made it every day, or whatever, unless the Lord's directed you to, right? This is not a, something spiritual pride. Uh, but it is one of those things that sometimes in Matthew 6, we forget that there are spiritual disciplines that if I'm going to sow to the Spirit so I can reap of the Spirit, there's some things that I need to be doing. We eat and we sow to the flesh all the time. But how do I sow to my spirit so that I can build myself up on the inside? In other words, I can, if we're a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body, how do I feed my spirit, not just my body, right? And not just my soul. We, we, have, we send kids to school to, to, to build up their mind. We, 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 make, we give, show them the peer, what is that, uh, food chart thing. You know, here, eat more of this, eat more less of this, right? But, but what does it look like to, to feed spiritually on your own? Like how many of you know that you can't just eat Sunday morning? You have to eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so in Matthew chapter 6, the Bible talks about three spiritual disciplines that, that we should be doing. It says when you pray, it says when you fast, and when you give. So there's three things that cause you and me to sow to the Spirit. Number one, uh, and again, fasting is a spiritual discipline that really should be part of our lives, where we deny our flesh, our body. Anyway, and then giving is one as well. Again, it's making that uh, uh, laying down what you've worked and exchanged for uh, and honor the Lord. But then number one, I want to just hit on this prayer. And you might call prayer, instead of prayer, you might call it require <laughs> instead of prayer. Sometimes prayer goes, you know, it's like it, we don't really know. We don't really catch the fullness of what prayer is. We say, I don't know how to pray. You don't know how to ask the Lord for help. You, you, do you ever need help? Help. <laughs> It's just, I mean, that, it's that require or an inquire. That's prayer. That's prayer. So anyway, that's an opportunity again, uh, 6 to 8.30 Monday through Friday. We're, we're keeping that open, and we'll be opening the, the, the uh, front doors of the church, and, and the sanctuary will be open. Lights will be on, um, on dim, and, uh, and you can bring your coffee. You can bring your Bible. You can bring whatever, and you can pray um, and, and just spend some time there. This would be awesome. All right, let's jump into the Word. You ready? All right, so we, in, this, uh, in the month of January and February, here we now are in March, we've been talking about first, getting things in order in our lives. And how many of that know that's super important? One of the things that we were talking about getting back in order is getting the Word of God back in our hearts, not just on our phones, not just it, you know, on the shelf. But, and so we've been memorizing some verses and so, so on and so forth. Last week's verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat or drink, whether you do, do it all for the glory of God. I'm going to slow down here in a minute, but I'm like trying to hurry because I want to get there. All right? But today's memory verse is what we're going to be talking on for the next three weeks. Um, we, we talked all about first, because, and it's interesting, what I, what I, as you're kind of taking a step back, you've ever heard that saying, hindsight's 2020, right? You can kind of stick, take a step back or you can, in a sense, walk a little bit further and now turn around and go, oh, I see what was going on there a little bit more. Maybe you get a little, a little taste, a little piece of it. And uh, I was looking back probably about three and a half, four months um, and, uh, just even what was being taught and what was coming out because it wasn't just like I had a sermon calendar and this is, all, you know, like what's going to, you're going to always get. Like it was like, okay, Lord, what do you want to say during hunting season? And, uh, and it's, uh, we, we came into this message about gifts and we were going to talk about spiritual gifts. And it was just kind of like the Lord was highlighting the spiritual things, right? And so just that awareness, a heightened awareness of spiritual, right? But, um, but as we came into the year, it was like, I got to pause on that because we got to get some things first. Got to get some things first because you can talk about the, the, this, this battle that you and I are facing, whether you know it or not, you're in, you're in a battle, okay? And there's a spiritual war for your soul. There's a spiritual war for your, your, your destiny or your eternal, where you, where you will spend eternity. Why? Because you're valuable to God. There's a, there's a war for you because you're valuable to God. And Satan does not want God to have anything that he wants or that he loves. So he's after you, not because he likes you, not because, other than anything, he wants to hurt the Lord. And he's not just after you, he's after your kids. He's at, he's at, and so, so many times we can go through life and there's, this, there's, there's, there, there's wars. The Bible tells us that um, in Ephesians that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I gotta swallow here, hold on. I, I'm like, hold on, I, get, so I was gonna drink this earlier and I never did. Hold on a second. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Here, excuse me. <laughs> Have you ever like had that where you're talking so much and you just you can tell like you're just building up spit? Anyway. All right. Anyway, and so there's this war going on, and so many times we're fighting this war, but we're actually fighting it against 
ourself. And so, that's a, um, and so, so we talked about getting some things first. Getting some things first. Because a lot of times there's problems because things just aren't in the right order. It has nothing to do with demonic, demonic things. It's just that I'm unwilling to yield to something that God says. And so we talked a lot of, all about first and getting things, a lot of things back in the right order. Because if I get God first, if I, if I go get God, God's word first in my life, what happens is, is a lot of other things can come in line. And then I can wrestle against the enemy and, set, and resist him and take authority over him instead of, in a sense, me warring against myself. You know, like sometimes your worst enemy is not the devil, it's you. It's what, it's what I'm unwilling to yield to. It's, it's my own choices, my own decisions. And, um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that in the next uh, three, or we talked about, again, opening our eyes to like more like spiritual, then talking about getting things back in first, because we didn't get done with, with the beginning of this, or the series called Gifts, because I wanted to talk about spiritual gifts that have been given to you. Um, God's equipped you for this time in this season on this earth. Went to first, and now here we're going to talk for three weeks about resistance. So resisting the devil. We're going to talk about spiritual authority. We're going to talk about binding and loosing. We're going to talk about uh, casting out. Um, and so sometimes maybe that could scare you. We're going to talk a, maybe a little bit about demons um, and things along those lines. Uh, demons are fallen angels. We like, we like hearing the word angels, right? Oh, angels. You're God's little angel. But then when we hear demon, it's kind of like, let's not talk about that. They're just as real as angels. Um, and and they're, they're, they're even assigned to you uh, to, 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 to jack with you, to jack with your kids. And there's a lot of um, spiritual oppression. Again, spiritual meaning demonic, okay? Um, that we just have decided that we're just going to give a, an English word, <laughs> And therefore, it's no longer warred against. Um, one of them could be depression. And you could say, no, that's just a chemical imbalance in the brain. Well, the crazy thing is you can medicate for it. You can medicate. Well, I... Anyway, we're going to go on. So we're going to talk about that, these things for about three weeks here. And today, I wanted to talk about resistance. We're going to talk about um, the war within. The war within. Now, before uh, we get to the point of the message... We're going to lay a little bit of foundation about um, God's authority and authority because how are we going to talk about resistance if we feel like we're like fighting from behind and I'm opposing something that's bigger and stronger and scarier and all of this than me. Uh, how many of you know sometimes we just want to run the other way and hide and hopefully that he doesn't eat all of us, right? Okay. Um, and so let's go here. This is our, our verse of the week, uh, James chapter 4, verse 7. It says this, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. That's King James. Submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee. Somebody say it. James 4, 7. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Submit yourselves. Who do you, who, who's the one that submits yourself? You. Me. I, only I can submit myself. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Today we're going to talk about the war within, which is really the first part of this verse, okay? Which is the submitting of yourself, okay? There can be hell in your home, or maybe sometimes the hell in your home is not seen until you're far enough down that you can't just reach back to the ledge, you know what I'm saying, to get back out? Like you're far enough down the pit that you, you, you know, he's going to keep you a little bit longer. You've heard this country song, um, something about like, don't let the devil... Uh, uh, long enough to know I'm gone, or what? I, I, I butchered it. I don't know. It just was. Help me out. What was the song? Nobody? If you're going through hell, keep on going. Help me out. Don't slow down. If you, yeah, something like that. Anyway, I don't know. That's not. I, I, anyway, let's keep going. Um, anyway, something. Don't let the devil know you're. Anyway. Um, submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So there is two parts to this verse. Submit to God, resist, and then he's going to run. Okay? Um, there, there's times that he's going to flee because he won't want to mess with you because you're standing your ground. There's other times that you're going to have to bind him up. You're going to have to cast him out. Okay? All right. So we're going to talk about that, and you're like, oh, man, is this... This is, we're kind of getting extreme Christianity. Uh, this is basic Christianity. 
And the problem is, is there's been things that have been so watered down. And honestly, um, uh, again, we talked about this last week about cutting the strings to where, uh, in a sense, that if, if you're going to uh, build a crowd and all this kind of stuff, you got to kind of keep it in vanilla and let you put your own toppings on it. Let me just tell you, we're ser- today we're serving peppermint bonbon, and if you don't like it, tough. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> anyway, all right, you don't even know what that is. That's mint chocolate chip. All right. <laughs> All right, James 4, 7, submit to God, then resist the, de- uh, then, then to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So let's talk about resist. Resist is a military term from the, the, that's used here uh, in the Greek. This was the word that was translated in English, resist, is a military term, uh, meaning to strongly resist an opponent, to take a firm stand against. So take a firm stand against the devil, is what he's saying in James chapter 4, verse 7. Uh, resist, it also means this, keep, keep one's position. Keep one's position. Did you know you've been given a position? You've been given a position in Christ. You've been raised up, seated far above. You know, it, it, it would behoove us. It would be good for us. It would be wise of us to understand our position and that we have authority over Satan and that we don't move from that. We don't just cower from that. But when we see his fingerprints in our lives, in our families, in our marriages, in the moment that we say something, when we see steal, kill, and destroy, those are his fingerprints. Stealing, killing, destroying. Where you see strife and all, you, you know, you know. But when that's going on, it would, we should do something about it. We should do something about it. We should resist. We should st- remain in our position, we should keep our position, which is far above, and take authority over him. All right? How many of you know if a dog is, if a dog is in your house and he is, he's muddy, okay, this happened recently, if there's a dog in your house and he's muddy from being out in the rain, and he comes in, how many of you know what dogs do when they're wet, wet, wet and muddy? They like shaking, and they also like, at least every dog that I've ever had, they like taking their wet body and rubbing against your couch and your bed and your carpet. You know, like, okay, I have authority over this dog. So what I did is I put him out. I'm like, we're not having the dog in the house. He's cold. I don't care. Until he's, you know what I'm saying? I don't care. Until he's dried off, until whatever, he's not coming back in the house. And, you know, sometimes the devil's just rub it up on everything, rub it, and we're just like, we act like we don't have authority. I just don't know what to do. Put him out. Okay, and that takes for you and I understanding that we have authority and we hold our position. All right, we hold our position, which is above. He's under our feet. He's put all things under our feet, according to Ephesians chapter 1, the latter part of Ephesians 1. He tells us he raised us up, seated us far above, put all things under, over the head, under our feet, which is the church. All right. Um, all right, now, never, what you'll see in the Old Testament, never you'll see in the Old Testament a man rebuking the devil. Enoch, or not Enoch, but uh, hold on, let's see here. Uh, Job, there it is. Um, Job did not, when, when the enemy was bringing stuff against him, you know, um, how come he didn't just stand up and say, get out of here, Satan. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Well, because Jesus hadn't come. There, the man did not have authority over the enemy. So authority matters to God. Authority matters to God. What you see in the Old Testament before Jesus, what you see is that the Lord dealt with people. The Lord, people knew of the Lord and how the children of God and how God worked on their behalf. And so you'll see this all through the Old Testament about how important authority is. Okay, let me go to here where Jesus, or excuse me, Jude chapter 1, verse 9. Of course, there's only one chapter in Jude, so Jude 9. Uh, Jude 1 9. It says, But even the archangel Michael, uh, when disputing with the devil over the body of Moses, did not presume to bring a slanderous charge against him or Satan, but said, The Lord rebuke you. So here's this picture uh, of there's these eight angels. There's three angels that we know the name of Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. And we know that, uh, just in context here, uh, just uh, we're putting the story together, this is maybe not full doctrine that you could fully build a case on, but this is presuming what you can see. We do know a third of the angels fell, cast down. We do know three names of angels in heaven, right? And so you have, and, and they're, they're strong angels or they're archangels, which means they were in a place of authority over other angels, okay? And so you have Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. Lucifer was cast down. 
right? And yet you have somebody, in a sense, where these three, and we know that God's three-part being, so it kind of makes sense even that he would have three leaders. That Anyway, and so one was cast down, and now when Moses, uh, who, who didn't get to go into the promised land, and he died, right? He, uh, Lucifer wanted the body probably to raise it up or do whatever to make it a god. You know what I'm saying? And so God came, sent his angel, one of his angels, uh, he sent Michael, a warring angel, to come down and to dispute with Lucifer, and he said, the Lord rebuke you. It's interesting that even though he was in heaven, he didn't have the authority to, to rebuke somebody that was on the same plane as him. So it's important for us to understand this, that you see that man, uh, even though God was mindful of him, we see this in Psalms, what is man that you're so mindful of him, that you have even made him a little lower than you, but he would, had moved in his, a place and given his authority away, that man had no authority over Satan. Uh, Michael didn't have authority over Satan. Who had authority? The Lord rebuke you. Okay? And so this is important for us to understand that God is just. And that he's, the reason he's just is because he works according to law. Right? I want justice. When do you ever hear somebody say that? What they're saying is, I want the law to work. I don't want mercy in play here. I want them to get what they have coming to them according to the law. According to the law. Now, I want you to see this in Mark 127. And the people were so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching. I've never seen this before. We've never experienced this before. There's a man. There's a man that's doing something with authority. He gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. So there, there had been, in a sense, this run amok of Satan to be able to do and torment whoever he want, wanted because, uh, because, they had, uh, because the authority was given by Adam in the garden. But now here one shows up, and there's, there's teaching, but not only is there teaching, there's authority over unclean spirits, tormenting spirits. And they go, what is this new thing? So this is brand new. And we see this right, right away, that Jesus comes, and he, why, how can he have authority? Because he's God. Yet he's man. So he has authority. He, he, he come, came down. And so look at this. So authority matters to, to, to the Lord. How many of you believe that? Authority matters to the Lord. Did you know that the Bible tells us all authority is from God in, in Romans chapter 13? Matthew chapter 8, verse 9, a uh, centurion said, um, I also am a man under authority. You remember that? And how, how Jesus commended him, and he said, not such great faith. There, he understood authority. And so really what the centurion was saying is, I too am a man under. He saw the chain. He saw that there was a, a chain of command. He saw that in Jesus. He said, I can see that you're getting something from somewhere else. I, I can see. And so he got, he got in the chain and he said, because I'm also in the chain, I'm able to pull from here and put it here. I'm in the chain. I'm in the supply chain. You're in the supply chain if you'll come under authority, where you can pull from heaven and, and take authority and bring it to the earth. If you'll come under authority. This is why it's so important for you and I to get in the chain. Yeah. What I mean by that is to get linked. Yeah. To get linked. But right now, in, in, as, as we see the day approaching of the Lord's return, what you'll see is there's so much rise of self and so much opposition to authority. Where there's opposition to the authority, you are no longer linked. You know, are no longer in the place of, of being linked where you can draw on something other than yourself. And so this is why even, even in the church, like, you, you uh, no pastor's going to tell me what to do. Oh, I, I can't believe it. It's like, don't, that's just how that was said. Or that, I mean, there's no longer authority doesn't even, it's like, I, I don't, authority just, we just flush it. Even the church, when it goes to presidents, not my president, well, he is. Whether you voted for him or not, he is. In Maybe we should have prayed. Maybe we, or maybe I did. Maybe we should, got involved further before. I, I'm just telling you. But also, just remember this, that he tells us to pray for those in authority, that we could live a godly and peace. So, the, so my, res, my response is to pray for, not manipulative prayers, but pr pray for them. And we also have to remember that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and he turns it. So sometimes the God's having to bring about his plan, and the person that's in the office is so that the, what is written in the book can come about. 
but I know you know best. You know, I know best about what should happen in all of America, in all of the world, and I can see everything from my crystal ball, and so he's not my president. He's blah, 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 blah. Pray for him. Pray. Inquire and require of the Lord. Lord, we need you today. We need you in our nation. Father, we need you. Bro, pe- uh, Joe, Joe, uh, President Joe Biden, he needs you. Uh, we, Father, we lift up our, our governor. We lift up our teachers. We lift up the principal. Well, can you believe in the schools they're letting this? Well, if you spend as much time praying as you do complaining, maybe it would change something. And then maybe not only would it change something, maybe you might get some direction to be present. Okay, so we're talking again about the war within, and God, he values authority. He is a, a person or a man, or not a man, he's the God of authority, he's just. Look at this in Psalms eighty nine fourteen. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Righteousness and justice. And it says, and yet mercy and truth go before his face. So yet, yet he, everything is founded on his authority, his kingdom, is because, because he, it's right, the righteous, the right call and just. So he, his, call, his, his decrees and his laws and his ways are the right way because he's God. Okay? And, and, but yet, I, and it's out of the foundation, and yet mercy and truth go before his face. And so he is a man that's law, law, uh, filled with righteousness and, and justice, and yet he has eyes that see, and, 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 and he's disposed to extend mercy, right, and, and, and truth. All right, let's keep going here. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12. I want you to see this. Um, again, I, I'd already mentioned a moment ago um, about Jesus speaking to unclean spirits and them coming out. I want you to see this in Matthew 12, 22. We'll go through to verse 28. It says, Then a demon-possessed man who was uh, blind and mute was brought to Jesus. Isn't that interesting? Demon-possessed, blind and mute. Okay? So there are, there are things, and I'm not saying that if, you, if somebody can't hear, it means they have a demon, or they can't talk, or they're mute, they have a demon. But I am telling you that there are natural signs that, uh, give, that, that have a spiritual um, back root. Thank you. Like behind the scenes, right? There are natural things in our life that, that we, there are times you'll see something and you know you can recognize, again, steal, kill, and destroy, that there's something behind that. And the Holy Spirit will teach you and show you where you're to take your authority. And the thing about it is, is ultimately, whether you call it a, a, a demon, okay, or an unclean spirit, it is an unclean word. That word spirit there is not the word demon. It's the word pneuma, which it means spirit, breath, or wind. It's a voice, okay? And sometimes it's not that there's a demon in you, but there is a voice in you that's ruling you or ruling somebody. You better believe it. It's the the breath, the wind, they're, they're being shaken. You can see the effects of the wind. You can't see the wind, but you can see the leaves shaken. And when someone's shaken and the wind that's blowing them, you can see that it's that wind that's blowing them, then my golly, you have authority over that in the name of Jesus. So we're not led by our eyes. We're to walk by faith and not by just what we see. But I'll tell you, there's times that you can see and you take authority and you bears witness in here and you take authority over it. We're going to get to that in the weeks, in, 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 not this today. All right? Then a demon-possessed man who was blind to me was brought to Jesus, and he healed the man so that he could, uh, could see and speak. And the crowds were astounded, and they said, could this be the son of David? Could this be the Messiah? Could this be our deliverer? Right? But the Pharisees heard this, and they said, only Beelzebub, the prince of the demons, does this man drive out. About demons. Oh, by only the name of Beelzebub. In other words, by only Satan is he driving out Satan's demons, his little. And Jesus responds back, knowing their thoughts. Jesus said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid to waste, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. How many of you have ever heard that verse? Okay. If Satan drives out, it drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, or by Satan, by whom does your sons drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, this is what I want you to see, verse 28, 
But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. There, he said the kingdom, God's way, God's rule area of his domain has come to you. Like I'm operating in his kingdom. I'm operating from his place of authority. So Jesus came in a place of authority to, to, to come and win back and to take back authority for us. We're going to look at that here in a moment to raise us up and to seat us far above. Okay? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let's go here. So um, oh, verse 29 and verse 30, we'll talk about those in the weeks to come. Tying them up, casting them out so you can actually work. But a lot of times you got like a little kid coming behind you right after you clean the house. You know what I'm talking about? There's cereal all over the floor, and we just got done. Or there's dishes in the sink. You know? That could be me. All right. Right after you got done doing the dishes, my, my wife says, oh, boys, and I'm one of them. So, All right. Colossians chapter 2, 6 through 15. Um, Colossians 2, 6 through 15. This is a really powerful verse that, or ch- passage here that we well, need to pick up on. Therefore, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to walk in him. So if, you're, if you've believed on Christ and confessed him with, as Lord, because how many of you know it's both important what you believe, but also what you say? So many times we only talk about what we believe. Oh, God knows my heart. But also he puts the, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, he puts the, what you say and what is in your heart on the same plane. Not, one's not more important than the other. Like, it's not like, oh, because I believe this in my heart, I'm, I'm going to go this way, right? Like, like in other words, it, it's like a, a, a trailer, okay, where if you turn one wheel, when they, you know, trailers that have one axle all the way through, if I turn just this one wheel, this one has to go with it. If it doesn't go with it, what happens is it just does this. It just goes in circles. So it's not just what I believe, it's also what I say. It's how you it's believe in what you say, all right? So here we go. Therefore, just as you have received G, G, uh, Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to walk in him, rooted and built it up in him, established in the faith as you were taught. How many of you say, say that? As you were taught. And overflowing with thankfulness. So continuing to walk with the Lord and continuing to, to uh, in, a, in a sense, uh, to live a life that's submitted, again, to our lives to the Lord, it has everything to do with, with thankfulness. Um, uh, I, I can't remember uh, where, where this, this example was, um, but somebody, the, there's a story of, of a slave uh, who was freed. And a guy bought her freedom, or bought this slave's freedom. And, uh, he, and he and, and said, you can go free. And, he, and the slave said, well, uh, uh, if, if I can have any choice to go with anybody, then I want to go with you because you paid for my freedom. Right? right? And so there's this reality of, of, of thankfulness. It's like, you, I, was, I was bound. I, was, I had a, a different destination. I was going to go. And, I mean, who knows what was going to be happening to me? Right over here, but somebody stood up. You stood up, and you said, "I'll pay the price. I'll pay. I'll pay the highest price. I'll, I'll no matter what it costs. I want you." And she said, "Hey, I got any choice where I can go? I'm going with you. I'm going with you because he paid the price." And so there was this this thankfulness that that would be in release and being set free. And the further, sometimes the longer that we've walked with the Lord. That we can, uh, we can, in a sense, walk away from thankfulness and, and the reality of the debt that, and the, the, that would needed to be paid that I couldn't pay. And so I had to be locked up because I couldn't pay it. But he set me free. He set me free. He set me free. This is what we celebrate like every, every day. But like this is why Easter is such a... He set me free. He set me free. He set me free. God, I'm, I'm following you. You set me free. And so he says this, he says, uh, stick with it, but also uh, the things you were taught and overflow with thankfulness. Lord, thank you for setting me free. Thank you for redeeming me. Thank you for taking me and putting me in this position, raising me up, changing my status, okay? See to it that no one takes, captive, uh, takes you captive, though, or through philosophy, excuse, excuse me, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, which are based on human tradition 
and the spiritual forces of the world rather than on Christ. So there are things that are taught. This is what I want to, to, to see, see. I want you to see here. There are things that are taught that are tradition, that are just. But there are also things that are taught that have a spiritual backing, to, that are a philosophy that is very reasonable. And that very much um, appeals to your, your, my reason and our flesh, okay, to get you and me to divert from that which would bring life. To hold it to a different standard. To allow what was once taught and what I once held to be, in a sense, not just shaken, but just let go. And now I, re- I take this teaching, okay? Now, I, you could, I could talk up here and I could ask this question. Because again, 20 years has passed since I was in high school. 23 years, all right? Um, things have changed, for sure. Um, what's on movies is different, right? Uh, but I remember there was a time um, where the Bible talks about let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but only that which is edifying. And it talks about guard your heart. There was a time when um, my mom, and, and, and not just my mom, but my wife's mom and dad, um, they, would, they wouldn't let us just watch movies, any movies, right? Because they might have, oh, shh, shh, be quiet, right? Or, oh, golly whopper. <laughs> or flipping, right? But now, now what we do is we say we, we'll watch it up to this level. Up to what level? Where, where does that line and who makes that line? Like, really, reality. This is, this is reality check. Like, the standard of the word is still the standard of the word, but then I might have to look different than the world. Then I couldn't watch anything in the world. I know. That would really... Oh. You, that would really... Oh. That would... Uh. So what's coming up? The world. So I'm duped. I'm already duped. There was a time when my priority was God first. But now it's God first when this is not in season. And right now we're coming into baseball season. So this is going to hurt some people that are baseball fans. But if it was football season, it would hurt some people that are football fans. And if it was basketball season, guess what? It would hurt some people that are basketball fans. Because God's first, unless it's in this season, I'm going to teach my kids this, unless it's in this season, then we're going to say, in, like, at what point does this season end anymore? This is what I found is the seasons don't end. This is, I got kids. It just doesn't end. I'm sorry. And when we make habits, habits, what happens is, is we, 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 we fall into the habit of even not gathering as the word said, as you see the day approaching. And therefore, uh, if somebody, you're going to see this here in a moment, if somebody brings a word to you, it, it can't take, it, because you're not in the chain, there's not a supply to you to set you free. And a matter of fact, you're putting yourself out alone to where the enemy can steal, kill, and destroy from you. And yet it's, you have no authority there. You have no authority there. When I'm unwilling to abide by God's word, when I step out of the chain of command, no longer do I have that authority. Have you ever heard the term open the door? You can open the door. So should that scare you? Not in that way, but should there be an awe, a rise and a reverence in the church of God, his church of an awe and a reverence for his word? God said Mufasa, woo. <laughs> Mufasa, woo. There, there should be the Lord. The Lord said. The Lord said. Okay, I got an adjustment to make. I got to submit myself so that I can resist the devil because we are at war. Because God said. This is the key. This is the key. God said. This is how Jesus finished. God said, I don't do except for God said. This is, the, this is so good for you and me and for, even for parenting. Um, let's look. What does God say about that? 
Because see, at, at the end of the day, I'm training my children, you're training your children to transfer their dependence from this father to their heavenly father. So at some point, at some point, it needs to be what God says in your, in your life. Otherwise, they won't know how to navigate what's going to come. They're going to just say, well, this feels good. This sounds good. And I was over here, and then this happened. And so then I just decided, and that just seems right. And you don't know where you'll end up. I mean, they might become a ty- Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah. And, that's, that, and we laugh about that. But it's because there is no standard. Yeah. And the standard starts with you yeah. and me. The standard is the church. The world's going to be the world, but the standard must be the church. The light is to be light. The salt is to be salt. We are to look different. I'm not saying we don't fall in skin or knee, but I am saying this light is up on the hill, or, and it's, it's up in the house, and it's so it's lit. You know, I thought about a t-shirt that would be cool and be about being lit. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's lit. The Word of God. Anyway, um, Okay, see to it that no one takes you captive, verse 8, uh, through philosophy and empty deception, which are based on human tradition and spiritual forces of the world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity it, it dwells in bodily form, verse 10. And you have been made complete in Christ. Now, this is what's so important. You have been made whole, or one of the, one of the words that you could see this word complete was you leveled up in Christ. Like, you know, like, big power, you know, like Nintendo. This is what happened in Christ. You were made complete. Where you once were lacking, you were now made whole. You were now what was once stolen from you. You've now uh, been, it's been put back to you. And so you've been made complete in Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority in Christ. So you've been made complete in Christ, who is over every, who is? You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Who's the head of all principality and power? Christ. Where are you? In him. So you have been made complete because you just got to put on the suit. Or you just got to get in him. And he is the head over all principality and power. In him I'm made complete. In him. Or under him. Because he is the head. And I'm the body. So where, where, where I, when I come under, when I come under, what happens, I become whole. If, I, if, I, if, if I'm not under him, I walk around headless. Which is crazy. Running around like a chicken with their... If you've ever seen that, it's, it, they, you, don't, you don't know what's going to happen. A mess. In him you were circumcised and putting off the sinful nature with the circumcision performed by Christ and not by human hands. And having been buried with him in baptism, you were raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. So you were in him raised up with him, verse 13. When you were dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave you. This is important for us to understand. He forgave us. He forgave me. He forgave all, us all our trespasses. What trespasses? Having canceled out the debt ascribed to us in the decrees that stood against us. Having the, the, what, what trespasses? Those you were guilty of. Guilty of how? Because of the law. What law? This is what we see. Why God gave us the law. To show us where we fell short. So he said, you were guilty of a lot of things. And it's important that we understand in this day and age that there's not even sin anymore. It's like, if you, if you feel it, do it, you know? If you think it, be it. Like, it's not, there's not even like, and sin is not just like, so many times we, we hear the word sin and we think of like evil sex or something like that. Or sex, like I don't know why, but sin, when you think of sin, it just means missing the mark. Sin, missing the mark. Most of sexual sin is just the flesh raging. And you know, there. Mother Teresa, Billy Graham, and the rankest sinner, their flesh, is all equal. Their flesh is all equal. Billy Graham, given to his flesh, 
would do the most vile thing you can imagine. Because the flesh is never satisfied. Nobody's flesh is holier than somebody else's flesh. It's evil. The Bible teaches us this. It's just what have they so chosen to sow to and to deny, right? Okay? And this is why spiritual disciplines, which is really what most of the New Testament is about, written to the church, is spiritual disciplines, right? Growing up spiritually, right? Um, okay, let's keep it going. He said, you have been forgiven, uh, canceled the debt ascribed to us uh, in the decrees that stood against us. How, how he took it and he nailed it to the cross. So he took, Jesus took... Uh, Required uh, the, the handwriting of requirements, the law, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Jesus nailed the law, that we, all the things that we couldn't measure up to, and he nailed it to the cross. And now he says there's, there's this law that everything's fulfilled, and that is to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor. And what is love? Preferring what God prefers. How do you know what he prefers? You ask. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Ask the Father. What would Jesus do? He'd ask the Father. What should you and I do if we're going to live a what would Jesus do? Ask the Father. Okay? Let's look at, keep going here to the end. Uh, having uh, nailed it to the cross and having disarmed, verse 15, the powers and authorities, he made a public uh, spectacle over them, triumph, or of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The cross was the victory. Hmm. It was the payment. It was the price that was paid to change your and my status to where now there's authority given to you and to me because we're in him. And the name of Jesus is, is, is the name I live in the banner that I fly under or that you have the opportunity and have take authority over all the works of Satan. These things that we're talking about today are important that you and I understand and see that they're like maybe some of what was actually going on instead of just saying, yeah, I'm a Christian. But there, there is a war for you. There's a war for your friends. And there's authority that you have and authority that's been given to you. But so many, but we first we have to understand that we're going to have to stop the war within. Next, next chapter, Jude, I want to go next place, Jude uh, 1, 3 through 11. And then we're going to go back to James 4 and we'll wrap it up. Uh, Jude 1, 3 through 11. Beloved, although I wanted to write to you, hey, Jude's writing this letter, right? He's like, hey, I wanted to write to you about salvation and all the awesomeness that it has and all the cool things that, that God did for us and how he raised us up. And, but he said, um, I was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation. It's like sometimes when you're, I really wanted to teach on this today, but I got to stop on top. I mean, oh, Lord, I actually asked the Lord this recently. Lord, can, can I teach something that is softer? Like more like not so hard. And he said, you, you, you do what I've asked you to do. I'll take care of the, the softness. Right? So like, I mean, this, this, was a, this was probably like six, eight weeks back where it was like boom, boom, boom. And it was just like level up, level up, level up. And it was kind of like, do we have to do arms again? Right? Like, let's legs today. And I hate leg day, but let's do legs, right? Um, he said, I was making every effort. Like, I want to, we know that the word of God is all scripture is inspired by God, right? It's God breathed. So he's like, I wanted to write to you, but, but God wouldn't let me write to you about this. He made me write to you, or because I'm under authority, I, I, I had to, I chose to, because to write to you, I felt it necessary to write to you, appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints. I'm writing to you to contend for faith. I'm writing to you to contend for sa what salvation really is. I wanted to talk to you and encourage. I'm saying you're going to have to fight to hold on to what was given to you because it's trying to be taken away. This is what he's saying. For certain men have crept in among you, verse 4, unnoticed. You know why unnoticed? This is where we're getting back to. Because we don't read that book like we should as the church. 
So you don't know when something is off. It sounds good, and it makes me feel good, and Christ came to set us free, so, oh, yeah, that's right. So they crept in unnoticed, ungodly ones who were destined long ago for condemnation. They turned the grace of our God into a license for immorality. And they deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Here's what they're saying. They're not under authority. They do what they want. They've been set free. Although you are fully aware of this, so here's going to write to you about something that um, you're very aware of. Okay, He said, guys, I'm going to write to you about something. I know you're aware of this, but I'm telling you about it again. And here, I put this in my notes. The decisions you and I make are life and death. The decisions you and I make are life and death. They, but for our children, they're, they're life and death. Eternal life and eternal death. I set before you life and blessing, death and... He didn't say, I set before you chocolate and vanilla. Whichever one you like, it really doesn't matter because you can have Neapolitan if you want to. No, he said, I set before you this one and this one. Like the decisions we're making really are life and death. And so then it causes you and me to where I actually love to pray because it's where I inquire because I require I inquire because I require, Lord, show me how to do this. How do I do this? Lord, show me how to do this. Show me how to run my, this business. Show me, how to, show me how to raise my children. Show me how to pastor this church. Show me how to, show me how to, be, how, how to walk in forgiveness. Show me how. Lord, show me how. You need, we need those buttons. Ask him how. All right. All right, never mind. You, that's, that's before your time. All right. You remember that? Like those buttons and like, ask me how? Anyway, all right. Ask him how. All right, although you were fully aware of this, I want to remind you uh, that Jesus had delivered his people out of the land of Egypt, that he destroyed, and he destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not stay with their own uh, domain, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he's kept in eternal change under darkness, bound for judgment on that great day. In other words, he's saying, the choices you make matter, and that God is just. And the, he said, I got to remind you of this. I don't have to, but I'm going to remind you. In the same manner, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them who indulge in sexual immorality and pursued strange flesh are on display as an example of those who sustained the punishment of eternal fire. So he's talking about how God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus paid a price, but the price for, for sin is wages are still being paid. Like he's saying, that, that, so if you and I are, he said, hold fast to the faith. Hold fast to that which was given to you. Verse 8. He says, yet in the same way these dreamers defile their bodies, rejecting authority, rejecting authority, and slander a glorious beings. But even the angel, or the archangel, Michael, who disputed the devil over the body of Moses, did not presume to bring a slanderous charge against him, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Why? Because he understood the chain of authority. He's talking about how right now, no one's going to be over me. You're going to do whatever you want to do. God's not over. He's, this is what he's talking about. People coming in and saying to you and me and giving us freedom to do whatever it is that we want to do, uh, which is yield the flesh, petting the flesh, right? And he goes on and he says this, that, hey, just know that, that decisions matter. They're life and death. I'm bringing this back up to you, okay? Verse 10. These men, however, slander um, what they do not understand. So here's what you'll find. I heard Pastor Willie George um, talking about this uh, recently, and I was like, man, you nailed it. He said, in the church, um, what you'll find is there's a lot of different things in the church. But he said, when you have a, a pastor or a a prominent voice that knows how to speak eloquently, what you'll find is even the world likes him. Even the world likes him and wants to be his buddy, okay? But they, the world did not like Jesus, just so y'all know. But the world likes these pastors, and these pastors like the world. But the Bible tells us that if you're a friend of the world, James 4, you're actually in ought against God. But so, they, they, and so what happens is, is now their conviction is not no longer to preach righteousness to the world. It's to preach to the church, um, Ease up on that. Let up on that on on that righteousness. You know, just your your views of conservative. Those are those are a little too conservative. You need to get a little more woke. 
So no longer are they preaching to the world righteousness. They're now they're, they're preaching to the church, in the church, and even to other pastors that, well, you need to let up on that. You need to blah, 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 because my conviction is that these people like me, and I've built this for myself. This is, and I'm actually, because I'm actually a friend of the world, I'm actually opposed to what God's trying to work. And I couldn't think of the word in that moment to, to where I talk about how it's like you, you ease up. You know, I don't know what the word I'm looking for there, but like, chill out, you know. Don't preach that. that that's too far. Don't you know about grace? Don't you know about this? Don't you know? I'm ta- I, again, what we're talking about here, the grace of God, it's by grace you've been saved, right? Through faith, right? And, and so it's not of our own works. It's by him, right? So I get that. I'm fully on, 100% on board of that. And I wanted to talk to you about that, just like Jude did. But I couldn't. It seemed like I had to talk about this first because we had to get back in the chain so that we could actually resist. Because we're talking about resistance here, but we're not resisting because we're out of the chain. And we need to get back in the chain because we've been hearing some things that just make us feel good and we're not accountable to anyone but ourselves. Because we're living in this culture of authority is not for us. But it is. So these men, however, slander what they don't understand. And like irrational animals, they will be destroyed by the things they do instinctively. Or again, like the flesh, right? So there's your flesh, your instincts. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 11, he says, woe to them. So hey, don't you love when God says woe? He does. He, he says, you know, he says woe to everybody. You know, he said woe to Judas. He said woe to Judas at the table. He gave him a warning right there at the table like, hey, I'm, I'm telling you you're at the place. Sin is up crouching at the door, buddy. Woe. You know, sometimes we sit in church and we hear Woe, and you know what we say? Go. This is true. Woe to them. They have traveled the pain or the, the path of Cain. They have rushed headlong into the air of Balaam, and they have perished in Korah's rebellion. Now, we're not going to take time to go into all those things, but I'll just hit on the last one, Korah's rebellion. It's found in Numbers chapter 16. It would be a great read on top of your daily Bible reading. Uh, number 16. But here's what uh, the, the, the Korah came to the tent of Moses and, and Aaron and said, uh, don't lord over us. Who do you, 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 don't you know that we serve in the temple and the glory of God is with us too? Who do you think you are to tell us? We'll just see who's, and you'll see that the earth opened up. You'll see that the, the, those that sided with them were consumed. Why? Because this is how God deals in his heart, his under, understanding authority. Do you remember even, even David, a man after God's own heart, how when Saul was murdered or killed on the battlefield or he was almost to the point of death, and an Amalekite guy sliced off his head, took his, basically his stuff and brought it to David and said, look what I did, and David said, how is it that you had the strength or the boldness or the, to touch God's anointed? In other words, there's something about authority that David also understood. There's something about authority here that he, he's saying these have fallen in the way where they said, don't stand over us. They came, verse 13, they came together against Moses and told them, oh no, that's, that's that, I, I was quoting from there. So he said, they, that's where I wanted to end, right there, verse 10. So they, um, or verse 11, Woe to them, they have traveled the path of Cain, they have rushed headlong into the air of Balaam, they have perished in Korah's rebellion. So you'd have to just go read that to really get the full picture of what he's saying, which ultimately is don't stand over us. <clears throat> James chapter 4, 1 through 7. What causes conflicts and quarrels among you? Even right now, like sometimes when you hear the word, there's this, oh. Why did I come today? Now we have something we have to talk about. And, and why did I come today? And my kids are sitting on the front row. Like my kids are sitting on the front row. You know what that means? I'm accountable. 
I wish we could have just kept going our, like, are we going to talk about this? We need to. What causes conflicts and quarrels among you? Do they not come from the passions that war within you? So here's what he's saying. There's a war within you. And that war is within your own self, spirit, soul, and body. There's a war of your flesh wanting, there's this war, okay? And he goes on to say this. He says, you crave what you do not have, and you kill and you covet, and you're unable to obtain. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask, or when you do ask, you do, so, uh, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. Again, motives to the Lord, huge. Giving you without which would hurt you would not be love, Okay? That you may squander it on your own pleasures. You adulteress, do you, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever chooses to be a friend of the world renders himself as an enemy of God. Or do you think, Scripture says, uh, without reason, that the spirit he caused to dwell in us yearns with envy, but he gives us more grace. This is why it says God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Did you know the spirit of God within you, when you're missing it, is yearning? And saying, come on, come on, oh. Like, have you ever prayed for somebody? Like, where you just have been in that place of, like, travail? Maybe you haven't. But where you just, everything within you just wants so bad for, for, for a, an adjustment to be made. But it's out of your control. It's in their control. And it's out of his control, the Spirit's control. It's in your control. And he's yearning, oh, come under. Oh, just say I make the choice. Oh, just say I'm going to choose what God says. Oh, just say, what does the Lord say? I say what the Lord say. Oh, I just want to bow my knee to Christ. Grace comes in, the will and the power to do and to act according to his pleasure. Oh, that you would say, oh, that you would say, what does the Lord say? Oh, that you would say, and you would lead your family. What does the Lord say? Oh, that you would say. He's yearning. Oh, that you would say, like even to, to bring you to salvation, he's yearning. Oh, just call on the name of Jesus. Oh, just surrender your life. Oh, no one comes except for the Holy Spirit draws. Oh, please. Oh, God. He's our helper. He's our comforter. Just stand by. And yet he's drawing. And he's saying, hey, let grace play. Let grace play in your life. Tag team grace, you're it. Giving me the grace to will. And to, oh, come under your word. There's grace to parent. Oh, there's grace. There's grace. Call sin, sin. So grace can win. Call sin, sin. There's guys that are struggling with porn and you no longer call it what it is. It's sin. It's a missing of the mark that pays wages. Call it sin. God, God, the sin where I'm missing it, I call, I call it what you call it. And I come under what you say. I come under, and, and he says, what happens is God opposes the proud, but he gives grace, more grace to the humble. So what does it look like to, to be humble and to be meek? What does it look like? It looks like wanting what God wants by saying simply this, recognizing, um, well, first I would say this, recognize what word you are under right now. So this is just, a, this is the real close, simple step of just basic how to. Ask yourself this question. What word, whose word are you operating under? Concerning whatever it is that you're talking about. Like whose word am I operating under? The decision that I made, did God, did, did I consult the Lord about it? Here's one of the, one of the most um, Hard, hard things for me. Well, I gave my word. I gave my word, but that word was not under authority. I hear people say, well, I gave my word, so I got to stick with this, and I got to stick, you know. But, man, I got to get under God's word first. Because the moment I say, well, I gave my word, and God's word says something different, I'm out of the link, guys. I'm not linked into the chain of authority to which pulls heaven to earth. Heaven to earth. 
heaven to earth. You know, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Recognizing what word I've come under. Saying with your mouth. You don't just don't just say yeah. I think it's this. Say, say what word you come under. I I've stepped out. I've come under my own word. And then this is called repentance. I've come under my. So many times there's not repentance because we. The, there's been this uh, attack on First John about repentance and these kind of things. If, if I don't know that I'm sinning, how can I ever repent? Because repentance means to turn around. So if I don't actually acknowledge the word that I'm under, if I don't actually acknowledge my, the sin, then what, when I turn around, I'm really turning around from what? Nothing. It's just empty. So acknowledge and make, make that statement. Find, ask yourself the question, Whose word are, am I under concerning this? It could be finances. It could be your health. It could be a hundred things. Okay, it's not just kids. I don't know why kids is on the, the plate today. But hey, what, what, what word have I come under? Um, make that statement. And then make, make this statement. Submit to God. God, I want what you want. I, I, I what word I come under, I get a direction. I, I see I've, I've came under my own word on this. Lord, I want what you want. I'm coming under your word today. Submit to God. That's first. This is the war within. This is how you fight the war within. It is with your words. It is with your words that you and I submit our lives. Lord, I want what you want. I choose what you say. Maybe you'll be at the place and now you've got to say, Lord, what do you say? And you'll find it in this, in this word that's useful to teach, to train, to correct. The word of God. The word of God. I am not ashamed of the word of God, of the gospel. It's, a, it's the power for you and me. Ha. You know, one of the things um, as we, we're going to close this morning um, Oh, thank you, Lord. And we know that that's what Jesus did and all the, where he said, I only speak and I only do, John 12, 49, and John 5, 19. But submitting yourself, Landon, actually, um, at the start of service, he, he had you submit yourself. He said, why don't you lift your hands? Yeah, I know you, you may not, maybe you, actually, you know what? This is your choice. This is, this is what he said. This is your choice. I'm not making you do it because hand surrendered that's not of the heart is no surrender at all, right? But he said, submit yourself. This is, you know what, that's what, that's what this is actually, a, a, this is submitting of self. You know, sometimes submitting yourself, the Lord is going to ask you to do this. If the Lord asks you to do this and you do this, are you submitting yourself? But it sure looks good. If the Lord asked you, to do that, but it said, you do this, ah, oh, my foot's cramping. Is that, it's not, is it? But it looks good. You know, last week we talked about cutting the strings. doing what the Lord asks. Lord, what do you say? I, I just, I want us to be doers of the word, not hearers only, um, and not just walking in deception. But this is where you submit yourself by raising, maybe it's raising your hands, whatever the Lord's asked you to do. Um, sometimes it is whatever the person up here that has been given authority and you've sat yourself under when they ask you to do something. Maybe it is not just sitting there like this because you are going to come under the supply. And maybe there was heaven to come to you and God did get authority in that place because all authority is from him and something was to come to you but you weren't in the chain because you were unwilling because I didn't want to hear from them because I don't like the way they talk and he always, whatever, one of a hundred things and you miss it. You're out of position. You're out of position. This is where we buy fruit baskets for our enemies. Hello? When somebody does something that you don't like and you're upset with them, 
Maybe. Go buy them that pair of Nikes. Why? Because I'm going to put myself under and I'm going to prefer them and I'm going to walk in love with them and I'm going to do what God would do towards them. This is where, here's one, pray for your enemies. Well, I'm not praying for them. I ought to tell them this on Facebook. I ought to tell them this on Instagram. I ought to blah, 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 blah. Submit to God. What did he tell me to do? If I have an enemy, pray for him. Father, I lift up their family. I lift them up. I ask you to bless them, to make your face shine upon them. In the name of Jesus, take your hands off my family. In the name of Jesus, take your hands off my finances. In the name of Jesus, devil, take your hands off of my body. I can speak because I am under authority. Under authority. Resistance is what we're talking about. Taking that place, standing up. But first, we have to win the war within. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. We're going to close this morning's service, and I know I'm a little long here. Uh, You know, who said, we didn't actually say on the sign out there, did it? Did it say service starts at 10 and ends at 1130? Was there an ending out there? Okay. So I'm actually not, those are imaginary strings. Mm -hmm. Service starts at 10. It ends when he's done. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Amen. So we're going to close this morning we're, um, by, by worshiping the Lord. Um, and then uh, we just want to for sure close with this song. But also if you are here this morning and you want to give your life to Jesus, man, I want to invite you down to give your life to Jesus this morning. Maybe you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Man, come down and confess him before, before maybe you, rededication. Maybe you need healing in your body. Maybe you need agreement and prayer about anything. Maybe you just need to have your knees at the altar because that's what the Lord asks of you. I don't know, but it's time that we don't just teach how to shoot and then say, that's how you do it. All right, go home, guys. We're going to pass out the balls. Here you go. Here's the balls. And sometimes right now, they just, God, I'm going to submit. I'm going to come under with my family. You might need to grab your spouse's hand, your, your whoever's hand next to you, and whisper in their ear, I know we've been missing it here. You know it? Yeah, I know it. Right now, let's just give this to God. You know? So you might come up here. We'll be available for prayer. You might do whatever the Lord asks you to do. And that's it.